To find out what happens if we run our simulation for another 100 years, we first have to add the according rows in our table on the left. To do so, we mark the two last columns or cells and then click Ctrl plus the down arrow to add 10 more cells. As the flow will remain 185,000 cubic meters per decade, we only have to change the numbers for the years. So first we change our first new row from 240 to 250, the next one to 260 and so on. We open our run window by clicking the according button on the top. You can enlarge it a bit depending on your monitor size. And then we start a run using the newly added information. You can now see that the information below uh, was extended to display our 100 additional years. Have a look at the growing stock graph in the lower right corner of the run window again. Our growing stock is measured as the total volume regardless of age. And the blue line represents the growing stock in areas that are not eligible for harvest and it steadily increases with time as the stands um, age in the absence of harvesting and natural disturbance. The green line is the growing stock that is not restricted from harvest and it rapidly declines until near the end of the planning horizon because it displays the harvest that we're actually carrying out. The red line is a combination of the growing stock in areas not eligible for harvests, like reserves, as well as the growing stock not restricted from harvests. Let's have a look at the harvest schedule on the left. We can see two distinctive declines in the red harvest curve. These declines are caused by the fact that there was not enough timber available to reach the decade target of 185,000 cubic meters. To review those results in more detail, you can double click on a year and from the drop down menu select a polygon. Let's have a look at our list and find one of the years where the harvest declined. In year 250, or in the decade between 250 and 260, our harvest declined to around 107,000 cubic meters. So we select that row. We double click on the year and we choose Polygon. You can now use the period selector arrows to cycle through the planning periods and observe how the attributes of each polygon change over the decades. Let's type period 1 into the period selector field here and then just click on the arrows to see how the numbers in the individual cells change. To view your results spatially, we can use the map viewer. First, open a new viewer window by clicking the according button and then click into the first year of the run that you've just carried out. Hold down your left mouse button and drag and drop the year over to the viewer window. Now you can see the distribution of age classes over your area. You can see the color coding on the left here. And by clicking the period buttons on the top, you can walk through your entire planning period of 340 years. But let's go back to our results once again. As we initially said, we were aiming at continuous harvest flows. We could not achieve that aim when expanding our planning horizon to 340 years. One reason for this is the fact that the long-term sustained yield is lower for the 340-year run than it is for the 240-year run. To achieve sustainable harvest flows for the longer planning horizon as well, we have to adjust our flow targets. To do so, we click on the flow button in our rule set editor and then carry out the according adjustments. One alternative harvest schedule could look something like this. We start off with a higher flow target than in the former runs and aim at 260,000 cubic meters in the first decade. We then decrease this target by 10,000 cubic meters per decade until the seventh decade. For the following decades, we set the flow target to 120,000 cubic meters. Let's make the according changes in our flow target table.
After defining our new flow targets, let's carry out a new run and check whether or not we can achieve our goal with those new definitions. We click on the Run icon to open the Run window once again and then push the Start button to initiate our run. Note that the growing stock first declines rapidly. However, after finishing our more intensive cuts in the first few decades, the growing stock increases again. This result shows that the real long-term sustained yield we are looking for must be a volume between 120,000 and 185,000 cubic meters per decade.